everyone and welcome to our Good Friday edition of The Wonder of Easter. Over the past three weeks, we have been learning about the wonder of Easter from Luke's Gospel. And today we will narrow in on the death of our Lord Jesus Christ at the cross. Today's devotion will look a little different to our normal pattern, but our prayer is that you as a family on this Good Friday will reflect and rejoice at the great accomplishment and sacrifice our Lord Jesus Christ made at the cross. Let's have a think about what we've learned so far though. Firstly, we saw the return of our King, the King Jesus, into Jerusalem. He entered Jerusalem on a donkey and was praised as King. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus is the King. But not everyone recognised Jesus the King. The crowd of Pharisees told Jesus to silence the disciples. But Jesus replied, even if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out because even creation recognises the true king. Then we saw the scary night when Jesus was arrested. Do you remember? He was praying with his disciples and loads of soldiers with swords and clubs came to arrest him. And they were led by his friend Judas. It was all very scary. The disciples went mental. They started going a bit mental. And one of them cut off one of the servant's ears. But we saw Jesus stay calm. He healed the servant's ear and he let them arrest him. Jesus was in control because he is the king. And getting arrested was part of God's big salvation plan. Then last Sunday, we saw, we saw Jesus, the almighty king of everything, up on a cross, facing jaunts to save himself. Jesus, who could have done anything, chose to stay there and take the punishment for our sin so that we could be saved, choosing to save us rather than himself. We're now going to read the, the next part of the story from Luke chapter 23. So if you've got a Bible, follow along, and we're going to be starting at verse 44. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining. Barnaby. Pardon me, it's got, it's got dark. Yeah, Tim, I can't see you. Are you, are you still there? They, oh, there, there you are. Yeah. Why, why, why is it dark? It shouldn't be dark. It's the afternoon. Wait, someone turn the lights off. What's going on? Gosh, this, this is so strange. It shouldn't be dark. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God. God, you are incredible. I've never seen anything like this before. Wow. And said... Surely this man was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness his sight saw what took place, they beat their breast and went away. Let's get out of here, Tim. Yeah, let's go. Oh, guys, it's all so strange. Come on, let's, let's go. go. It's all the oh, guys, let's get out of here. I don't, I don't really understand what's going on. But all those who knew him including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now, Jesus dying on the cross is the central part of the entire Bible. And Luke here wants to show us some specific things that Jesus' death meant. We're going to look at three. And the first of which is we see that it went dark. Now, darkness in the Bible is a sign of death and a sign of judgment. Jesus here showing us the ultimate act of love by taking the punishment of God's judgment upon sins. 
God's righteous anger for all the wrongs ever done being poured out on the son he loved. And then we saw the curtain tearing in two. Now, the curtain in the temple was a barrier between God and his people. They couldn't go in to the presence of God. It was a sign that because of our sin, we couldn't be friends with God. But when Jesus died, this curtain tore in half. It was a big sign that now we could be friends with God through Jesus' death. He has made us right with God. So there's now no barrier between us and God. Thirdly, the centurion's comment reminds us of the innocence of Jesus. On the cross, as King Jesus breathed his last breath, the centurion said, surely this was a righteous man. Surely this man was innocent. Jesus, the innocent one, swaps places with the guilty and takes the punishment we deserve. King Jesus, the innocent one, chose, chose to save us instead of himself. Now, we, we've got some questions for you guys to think through as a family. Now, uh, we saw the sky went dark to show us that the cross was an act of God's judgment upon sin. But if the cross wasn't an act of judgment, what would that mean for us? Who would be judged for our sins? And secondly, we saw the curtain tear in half, which means that we can be friends with God. But what does that really mean for you now? And thirdly, we saw that Jesus was beaten, mocked and crucified unjustly. He was innocent of all charges. Could Jesus have swapped places with us and taken the punishment we deserve if he was guilty? Why or why not? Thank you so much for listening, everyone. You might now want to take some time as a family to look through these questions and have a discussion about it. Um, from the three of us, we wish you a happy Good Friday and we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya.